The tree pit we're constructing today is what we call a specialist suds tree pit. That means it's designed to cope with stormwater runoff from an existing road and take that water into the tree pit and manage it in such a way that the tree is looked after but the water is dealt with and contained and controls its flow into the stormwater infrastructure that might be existing. So here we've got our prepared tree pit. It's been levelled, the drainage layer has been put into the pit and compacted with a whacker plate with two or three passes. We've got a nice level even surface and we've installed a drain here because this is part of a suds tree pit. That means it's going to be taking water from the road and the paving around the tree pit and using the whole volume of the tree pit as attenuation. But we don't want this tree pit to remain waterlogged for long, so this drain is a very critical part of the success of the tree pit for the long-term health of the tree. So what we're doing here is putting a hessian layer above the drainage and the purpose of that is to prevent the soil fines migrating down into the drainage as the tree pit settles down. The hessian will, wrap, will rot away completely in two to three years and so it won't, won't be a barrier. One of the issues we have with artificial geomembranes is they tend to clog with silts but this one will rot away quite naturally and the soil will have settled by that stage so that we don't get fines clogging the drainage layer. So it is quite an important stage of building the tree pit. We're just cutting here around the uh, inlet to the drain pipe. Over this inlet the, uh, we will be putting the contraflow chamber or the arbor flow regulator chamber as we call it to regulate the flow into this drain. Okay so now we're putting down the geonet. It's a 20 mil reinforcing geonet and what this is going to do is give the whole ground stability as we construct the root space assembly on top of this. It gives us a stable base long term, assists with spreading any loads that the root space system will be subjected to. Um, just gives a bit more overall stability to the tree pit. Okay, so now we've completed our geonet layer to give us that extra strength and lateral stability. The next phase is to locate the arbor flow regulator chamber, which is a combined silt trap and also flow regulator, so that in some situations the tree pit will be draining from that tree pit into the existing storm drain system. So we need to regulate that flow to an absolute minimum to retain water in the tree pit for as long as possible to maximise the sud's benefit. This chamber acts as both the silt trap as the water flows in, but also a regulator chamber as the water flows out on an eventual journey to the next stage. We now want to put the root space structure in place. On this face of the root space panel, we have a interlocking clip here. And on the reverse face here is the receptor channel so that each root space member can click into its neighbor with a positive click fixture. It has vertical locks too, so that if we were doing a two story high structure, it would just simply click into place. So we start in one corner. It's actually the heart of a tree pit really. It's the bit that's gonna look after the roots in the long term. So it's very important we get this right. And that is installed in sections. It's like a lattice. And it's a very open lattice and it's very quick to install. Okay, so what we're doing here is setting the position of the roots, root space matrix in relation to our arbor flow control chamber so that we're working back from that fixed point. It's important before we go too far in constructing the root space assembly to put in some of the lids to ensure that we've got the whole structure square. So what I'm going to do now is locate some of the lids so that, um, as we work back we'll be keeping the whole structure square. This is quite important because once we've loaded it with soil it's very difficult to square this up once it's loaded. So we put the lids in around two sides at minimum if not all four sides to give us a complete rigidity before we load with soil. So what we've got here is the uh, interlocking root space side panel which we use if it's, uh, the structure is immediately adjacent a heavy load bearing area. So that to give the uh, whole structure a bit more stability against lateral ground loading we can slide these panels in they interlock with the U-panels the whole way around. You can see it's grooved all the way around that means you've got a really good nest in there with giving you a lot of structural strength within the system.
Okay, so we've assembled the root space perimeter and we're just finishing that now. We've left this central opening aperture completely free of root space. We haven't put a structure in here and the reason for that is because this is where we're going to plant the tree ultimately. So that our root management will go around the top section here, around here, along here. This is one and a half meters long by one meter wide. So this area here is completely free. It's just soil, root anchoring, and an irrigation system for that tree as the early establishment phase. What we're trying to do is leave this area as uncluttered as possible. So we don't have the root space here. We only need the root space where we're going out underneath paving, where there's gonna be that load bearing support. That's where we need the structure. One of the things we advise contractors to watch for when they're constructing this assembly is when they're assembling the panels, situations like this, where the U-panel may be in direct contact with the sidewall of the tree pit and that tree pit creating pressure on the matrix. It can push it out of squares. It's just something to watch for. That's why we advise a 200 mil gap around the outside of the structure to assist us when we're positioning it. We've got a bit of room to play with. Okay, so what we've got here is substantially the first phase of root space construction complete. We now need to fill it with soil. Around the perimeter of the root space structure, you'll see a 20 mil open mesh. That's like a reinforcing mesh, the same as we used at the base of the tree pit. And what that is doing is gonna be holding the soil within the construction when we fill it and giving a little bit of extra, that extra stability that we want. It's also to stop some roadstone, which is used outside of the tree pit, migrating into the tree pit itself. So that's, it's just like a separation, but it's not so fine that it's gonna constrict roots. If the roots need, want to grow beyond this tree pit, they can, and that's not a bad thing. So the, the, pit, the mesh just stops a general migration of material between pit and its surround. What we'll be doing is using the excavator to drop soil in and be using hand tools to just shovel it either way, gradually, gently firm it. We'll need to move it underneath these side panels as well, but it's a free flowing soil. We don't, it, it's a quite a quick, easy process to do. What we're doing here is assembling the Arbor Flow modules, which will take in the water from the surface and distribute the set of the water down into the cell structure below. So you've got these panels, linear panels, you've got corner sections which interlock, water can flow around the system. On the inside of the panel, you have root deflecting ribs to prevent root spiraling. So they go on the inside and then the panels meet up and then we have a metal bracket which clips it all together and a screw and bolt inside here. So we've got a complete water surround, if you like, which is both root management and water storage and attenuation. As we've mentioned, air supply to the soil zone is absolutely critical for its long-term success. So one of the ways we can do that is by using the Arborflow 150, which is a square, heavy cast, heavy duty inlet for a permanent installation in a paved surround. There's two ways we can bring this to the actual air deck on the root space. One is by simple means of this tube here, which can plug into any one of these tiles. So that that's bringing up to the surface, then the vent sits on top and fits into the pipe, and that finishes flush with our paved surround. So we've got, we can adjust the height of this pipe to get it exactly right. It will be the same height as this, which is level with the paving with the top of the curb when we're ultimately done. So that's one way we can bring air to, the, to, to supply the soil in the root zone. The other method we have of bringing air to the, to the root space structure is by use of an aeration manifold. Now we use this product when the actual location of the finished inlet is critical to, in the paving design. And what it means is we have the flexibility to bring air to the surface at any given point. So what we do is we use this manifold it's, the, uh, it's a product that's deliberately designed for this purpose, specifically designed. And it, what it does is locate in the centre of the tile, the aeration tile. Then we can bring this round at any angle and we can shorten it off and insert the sawn off end into here to create an exact distance. So it gives us infinite flexibility as to where the air inlet will finally finish up, which is popular for architects and specifiers who want least disruption in their paving design. Once we've located where we want that to be, this metal fixing bracket 
goes in location and we can screw that to the air deck lid. We've got that exactly where we want it. We can then attach our vertical pipe to this end here and then we will assemble this and we've brought the air exactly where we want it to be. So it gives us a lot of flexibility with this package and it underlines really for us the importance we get air supply but it's not obtrusive in the paving it's, it's where the specifier wants it to be where the client wants it to be it's not right in the middle of where they don't want it to be and that's what this product is all about so this this product we're using here is a two mil fine mesh it acts as a separation layer between the top of the roots base construction and the lower layers of base course for a paving design now we're using a mesh today instead of a geotextile mat because we want maximum porosity we're going to be using a porous paving round here, a block paver with gaps in that allows stormwater down through the structure of the paving and a specially designed sub-base to allow water to flow right the way through, evenly through the structure. So what this is doing is preventing any fines from getting into the root space. It's keeping all the structural elements where they should be, but maintaining maximum permeability. That's why we're using this mesh here. So what we've seen here under construction is a complete holistic tree pit solution, if you like. It's a system that works together of many components, but each one has got a vital role to play in the health of that tree in the long term. So I think what we've done here as a team at Green Blue Urban is we've brought together the most comprehensive tree pit system anywhere in the world. We're very proud of it. There's a lot of unique features here, unique to our company. So we believe it is the most comprehensive system on the market anywhere in the world.